What's up, y'all? It's your girl, Jay Renee, with Prison Ride Radio. I hope that you're doing well. We got a brother back on the line, but this time he's coming to holler at us about his music, all right? Um, he was here before, like I said, but we're going to reintroduce him for his musical craft. We're going to talk about that. It's the brother, James Joseph. What's up, bro? How you doing? I'm okay. What's up, big sis? How you? I'm chilling. Glad that you got to pull up on us um, so we can talk about some of your music. We didn't get the opportunity to do that last time. Um, But before we jump into the music, for those where this might be the first time that they get to hear the sound of your voice, tell them a little bit about yourself and where you're from. Hi, uh, my rap name is James Joseph. I'm from Landover, Maryland. I'm from a hood called Kitland. It's very popular. If you you know the you know the actor Martin Lawrence, that's the area where he's from. I'm from the area where the Martin's from. Um, matter of fact, to be more specific, a better landmark, I'm right there where the uh, Washington, the old Redskins, the new Commanders Stadium is. That's my backyard. Okay. So let's get into the music. How long have you been interested and have you been, you know, into rap? I want to say I've been into music all my life. It's, it's been throughout my family. Like right now, I got a cousin. His name Thailand. Shout out to Thailand. He a singer. He on all platforms right now. Uh, my aunt, she producing him. But I'm just putting him on because, like I said, it's, it's been coming through the generations since my grandfather... My grandfather, who passed away, he had his uh, own group singing group back in the day, a bass group sing, uh, singing type group. Um, and as I was coming up uh, as a little boy, my brothers had a go-go band. You know, go-go is very popular where I'm from, in the D.C. area, the uh, D.M.B. area. Mm-hmm. And uh, I just always had music rattling in my head all day, all day long, you know what I mean, coming up. So... I knew how to play every instrument, and I I did I never stuck to one. So I transitioned to the microphone, and once I got to the microphone, I would make noise, but I wasn't I wasn't rapping. You know what I'm saying? I wasn't okay. I wasn't creative. So as I started to practice, that's when I started to learn how to write hooks. Then I started writing. Uh, verses, but I didn't know how to write a 16. I didn't know what a 16 was. Okay. You know what I'm saying? To know music, you have to know the mathematics in the music. Uh, besides that, uh, I want to say it started at about the age of 17. Once my son mother got pregnant, that I wanted to pursue a rap career. But I was always involved in neighborhood like situations and getting locked up. And that would stop me from being able to pursue what I wanted to do. Okay. I can understand that. So it sounds like music has been around you all your life. Um, And coming from being around different genres, I'm sure that probably affects how you produce music. So how would you describe, like, your style? I can be... I can be gangster. I can be humble. I can talk about peace. Like, I got a song on uh, the mixtape that I did since I've been locked up um, as you, uh, from the videos that you posted. It's called Winking on the Post. That's the name of the mixtape. And the reason why I called it that was because at the time, that's what I was filing in court. I was filing a post-conviction. Mm-hmm. So that's why I named it Winking on the Post. Um, and the reason why I say that is because I have a song on there called Poverty. And on the hook, I say, fell victim to poverty, but I'm going to bounce back. And that song is for kids. It's dedicated to my son and to kids, period, telling them to stay away from drugs, Mm -hmm. telling them to stay away from guns, and just anything that will bring you to where I'm at now. You feel what I'm saying? So I like that song a lot. I didn't do a video for it because I got hemmed up with the cell phone and wasn't able to do it. Right, 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 right. (laughs) Yeah, you know, that happens. Um, I got to listen to some of your music, and I definitely can say that um, one of the things that I've seen is that you're very versatile, and you have the ability to kind of adapt to to different styles of beat. You know, you don't seem to be stuck in a box, so that's something that can definitely be appreciated. 
I heard you say that you know you did your mixtape since you've been behind the G Wall. Congratulations on doing that. What motivated you to want to knock that out while you're there as opposed to waiting till when you come home? Because I didn't want to let time, doing time, stop me from doing what I like. You know what I'm saying? I love mm-hmm. music. So just because I'm locked up, I didn't want that to, like I said, interfere with me being able to put it in, in a recording sense. Because, well, let me back up. Because I was fortunate enough to meet a guy who was locked up for about 20 years. And back back then, they was able to buy, like, pocket studios and stuff like that before they had a law where you couldn't buy no more recorders and stuff like that because of, like, incidents of people recording their cell buddies talking about cases and stuff like that, right? Mm -hmm. However, this guy still had a pocket studio. And I'm saying that to say that's why the, the, um, the, the, the quality of that music is not up to par like it would be if I was in a real studio. Right, right. That that music would be, that would be compared to recording with a old boombox. That, that was basically how I recorded that. I got you. Um, you know, you sometimes you got to be, you got to work with what you have, you know, and I think that anybody that takes the time to listen to your music will be able to appreciate the effort put forth and understand the situation, you know? It's not like it's a studio right in next door to where you can go in. So I definitely appreciate the effort, and I'm sure others will as well. Speaking of effort, um, I always let, you know, artists have an opportunity, you know, to show us their craft or whatever. So I definitely want to pass you the mic and give you an opportunity to go ahead and drop something on us. Oh, okay. You ready right now for me to rock? Yeah, we ready right now. Ain't no question. All right, but I'm a nigga that's from Landover, Merlin. I'm a get rich or die trying like Curtis. Got out the joint, I told moms, don't worry. I promise on my life to get you a house in the suburban. Shit, I'm a nigga that's from Landover, Merlin. I'm a get rich or die trying like Curtis. Got out the joint, I told moms, don't worry. I promise on my life they get you up. I'm chasing that cash money like Baby and Wayne. Even if it's back to serving that boat or that cocaine, I ain't really trying to hustle for the sake of my son. One well, more charge to get me sent up the road, and I'm done. So I'm praying, please, job my heavenly Father God. Please lead me through a path where I don't have to see no bars. I'm receiving your blessings and understanding the message after Hurricane Katrina. You gave us a black president, but still ain't trying to send us that people is being pregnant. I be looking for jobs. I be dressed all casual. They all say they get back with me. Say, nah, because of my record. I think it's because I'm black, because I ain't even no selling. Being on probation, that don't make it no better, because my agent said he asking where I'm getting the cheddar. I be ready to say, fuck it, roll a blunt and get high. With my back against the wall, only the strong to bad. But if you look deep, what? Deeply into my eyes, you can see it's all real. Nothing about me to stop. I just be like, don't worry. That's what I tell my mama. Mama, your son's got you. Shout out to my brother. Hey, Wayne, hey, white man, what up? Hey, Jason, for Joshua B, then we hitting the strip club. Yep, yep. Uncle LG, he a trip. I love him, but he a clown. The doctor told him, stop. He still ain't put the cut down. Shout out to my little sister, the one. I ain't forget you. I was just in the middle of painting the perfect picture. And I almost got it when it sound like this. I say, because we going to make it like the boy dated you. Yeah. Because I'm a nigga that's from Landover, Merlin. <laughs> okay. Yeah. All right, bro. You was going hard, huh? <laughs> All right, so. Yeah, what's that was the, just um... something, man. I just came up. Okay. I'm <laughs> All right, so tell the people what the future holds. What you trying to do? Um, well, I just, I just filed a motion, um, for the drug program. I just sent them all today. So it was stipulated when I first took my plea deal that I needed drug treatment. So I'm, I'm looking forward to coming home real soon, and um, 
if I can get the support behind me and I can get home, like, if I, I'm going to be so grateful and thankful, and it's just going to be time for me to put my foot on their chest like Commonwealth out Virginia. Okay, so what's some of the stuff that can get you home? Um, well, as of right now, I'm making big changes. I'm staying away from knuckleheads and just, just staying off a locker. And my, as my last uh, interview was, I was speaking on how they found me guilty for something they shouldn't have found me guilty of, mm-hmm. which was on the last podcast. But I'm, I just wrote the judge, though, so I'm just praying. And hopefully, man, the viewers, the listeners, if, if y'all liking what y'all hearing, it could be a lot more coming if y'all could show some type of support. And I'm also single, too, for the, for the ladies out there. I'm single. For, for the ladies that, that's interested in, uh, what's that show called? Love After Lockup? I've been hearing about that show. I'm trying that to do show, a love. That a show, yeah, that show ain't no good. But yeah, it exists. It showed the it showed the worst. It showed the worst to, of people, and it it helps carry a stereotype of incarcerated people. But that's another show. But I feel what you're saying, though. So tell people how they can get in contact with you. Right. Okay, you can write me um at one three eight hundred, which is thirteen eight hundred, McMullen Highway, Southwest. Cumberland, Maryland, 21502. And my name is Joseph Johnson, and my ID number is 400576. It'll get to me in three days. Okay, for sure. Um, before we wrap it up, is it anything that you want to um, hit that we haven't talked about? Anything we should know? Um, I'm, just, I'm just so happy that, you know, uh, shout out to you for having this platform, uh, Prison Ride Radio, shout out to Dutch. Um, if y'all haven't read those Dutch books, y'all need to go get them, the trilogy. Matter of fact, watch the movie. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's what y'all need to do. And um, just stay tuned. James Joseph, man.